You will drown in eternal night. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to another Mortal Kombat mobile character review. Today we are taking a closer look at Cold War Sonya Blade. We will go through all of her basic attacks, her special attack, her x-ray, her passive and everything else she brings to MK Mobile. Cold War Sonya Blade is part of the Spec Ops class and her passive is called Blizzard Skin. Each team member starts encased in ice armor that reduces 90% damage of a special attack or x-ray slash fatal blow for 8 seconds. Cold War characters have no time limit on ice armor. All Cold War teammates have 60% chance to gain ice armor on special attack too. In terms of synergy, Cold War characters do 10% more damage versus Day of the Dead characters. Cold War Sonya Blade was introduced to the game on September the 1st of 2015 with update 1.4. She was a gold card and on top of that she was also available in challenge mode. Her passive has changed drastically. The old passive stated plus 30% attack versus Outworld. Each team member starts encased in ice armor that reduces incoming damage of a single, special or x-ray attack. In other words, this ice armor remained for every team member regardless of which class or team he belonged to, whereas now the unlimited ice armor is only reserved for Cold War characters. After unlocking her in the challenge mode, she was available for 370 souls in the old store. Over the course of the last few years she is and was available in several different packs and at some points it's even questionable if some of these packs still exist, but here is just a little overview of packs that she has been available in or is still available, which one of those are still viable, we will have to see about that. Because it looks like there are several changes been made to the game over the course of the last few months and it might cause a little bit of confusion. Back in the days she was maxed out with level 50 and fusion 7, but since they did that upgrade with update 1.18 she now is maxed out with level 60 and fusion X. Sonya's gear piece is the Military West and it gives you 35% max health boost, 20% self heal at the end of special attack 3 or x-ray slash fatal blow attack, as well as 50% opponent critical hit chance reduction. In terms of her feats of strength she will have to perform 2000 special 1 attacks to unlock her rune. For her victory stances she will have to win 750 matches in Faction Wars. For her taunts she will have to win 500 matches in Battle Mode. For her icons she has to perform 3000 combo enders. For her backgrounds she has to perform 250 x-ray slash fatal blow attacks. And for her titles she has to perform 1500 special 2 attacks. And now we are going to take a closer look at the victory stances one by one starting with Double Down. Next would be No Chance. The third one is called Ten Hut. And exclusive for Cold War Sonya Blade only, Sonya will break you. And on your victory screen it will look like this.
Now I'm going to show you all of her backgrounds. Next up we have the icons. And finally the titles. Cold War Sonya Blade has two kinds of combo enders. The first one starts with a punch, goes into a kick and then ends on an elbow attack, knocking the opponent down to the ground. Her second one consists of two kicks pushing the opponent back, making it ideal for follow-up attacks. Her special one is called R-Kick and it has merely a damage effect tied to it, so there are no buffs or debuffs tied to it. This attack only deals moderate damage, but at least it is capable of knocking out your opponent. Her special 2 is called For the Motherland and it has a power drain effect tied to it. This attack consists not only of two mini games, but is also capable of knocking out your opponent whilst also dealing massive damage to it, which can backfire greatly especially when opponents resist the power drain or even are immune to that. And since it also has a lot of mini hits, it's very likely that a Revenant Shield will be triggered. Her X-Ray is called Special Forces and it also has a Power Drain effect tied to it. By the time of this recording, this Sonya Blade variation is the only one that has the Power Drain instead of giving a shield, which kind of makes her unique. Visually all the X-Rays look the same though. When it comes to the passive, we only really have to mention the Ice Shield, where she takes less damage from incoming attacks, which makes it very useful if you are facing X-Ray teams and the sword. With her Brutality gear, she does not only get a special combo ender which stuns the opponent, but she is also capable now of pulling off mid-match brutalities, the so-called brutal ending, and with that extra stun effect tied to just a combo ender, she is way more dangerous than she has ever been. The brutal ending as well as the brutality itself is of course a nice callback to her original fatality in Mortal Kombat 1. The final animation is very close to the brutality of Scorpion characters though. And now it's time to recommend some gear again and my first choice goes to the Rusty Chainsaw, not only for the block break on basic hacks, but also to reduce the power costs of Special 2 by 50% and since her Special 2 is basically the most important attack in her arsenal, 
This one is one you would like to have more frequently. My next choice goes to the Military West, her own gear, not only for the health boost but also the critical hit chance reduction, which can be extremely useful, making Sonya Blade a very tough cookie to take down. My third choice, and this one is really important if you don't have her brutality equipment, would be Moloch's Ball and Chain, because this way, especially with her special 2, she will most likely or most definitely break the block of the opponent with that special attack and on top you also might get the special 2 for free as well as adding lethal blows to it. Now we're getting into the brutality gear territory from the cold war tower. We're starting here off with the general's knockout gloves which give you power generation boost. Also the chance to remove an opponent's uh, active buff on combo enders as well as the chance to stun an opponent for a few seconds if you're dealing a critical hit on basic attacks. That is kind of confusing because usually that happens on a combo ender and it's also listed to be the final perk to unlock if the gear is maxed out which also weirdly works if the gear is not maxed out because I literally get that um, stun effect even though my general's knockout gloves are not maxed. So the typical MK mobile confusion here. Maybe in the future a few things will change here, we will see about that. But now moving on to the best gear for Sonya Blade and that is General's Father Gun. With this one you will get a damage boost against of enemies affected by stun, you will have unblockable chance on basic attacks as well as special attacks, so in a way that would replace Moloch's ball and chain. And once maxed out you would even have a 50-50 chance of shield break on special attack 1. And when it comes to the favorite loadout at the moment I would go with her brutality gear as well as the military west and the T-800 endoskeleton to boost her health even more as well as reducing the power cost of special 2 by 50%. Next up we have the character recommendations and here we can basically directly start with Balance Kenshi who gives one bar of power to all Spec Ops characters. My next choice would be Strike for Scorpion simply for the fact that he can save Sonya Blade in case she would get knocked out. My third choice would be Cold War Scarlet, here we have uh, damage reflect after the use of special one, at least there is a chance. So a neat little synergy there, then the next option would be Cold War Scorpion. This guy would enable all Cold War teammates to also have a fire DOT on special attack too, once you reach a certain percentage. And the winner in my book and the best character to play with Cold War Sonya Blade is Cold War Sub-Zero. He adds that chance of Frostbite on Special Attack 2 and Frostbite is one of the most annoying debuffs we have in the game and everybody who has been Frostbitten knows how bad it actually feels. So if you have Cold War Sub-Zero in your team and then apply Frostbite even with Sonya Blade. It's a lot of fun if you are on the side of handing that one out. Cold War Sonya Blade is without a doubt one of the really useful characters in MK Mobile, even though I have to say that she was even more so as she was still a gold card, because she gave that ice shield to basically any character you added to the team and it was not tied to Cold War characters only. And as a result we basically saw everybody playing her in all kinds of teams. If you entered Faction Wars back in the day it literally felt like 4 out of 5 times in a hard battle you faced a team that included Cold War Sonya. Now with the upgrade or downgrade I would say uh, that they did with update 2.0 and adding her basically only to a Cold War team to really be that useful. Um, you see her so rarely and if then mostly in a Cold War team and not outside of any of those. In other words the players have spoken and now Cold War Sonya is kind of ruined. 
but of course she still has her usage, especially if you're using her in survivor mode just to block an incoming x-ray at the start of the match for example. But with all that being said, let's get to the pros and cons section and let's have a quick overview. The first pro I would give her that is that she is shielded. Because when just looking at her as a character itself, she always has the ice armor to start with, it doesn't expire unless it is broken by a special attack, so she is very well protected and that's a very good thing for this character. My second pro would be the high damage output on special 2, as I already mentioned it has also the negative side if uh, for example that special 2 is survived or uh, the opponent is immune or resisting the power drain then they will get a lot of power and basically have enough power to answer with a special attack which can badly backfire for Cold War Sonya Blade but if it works as intended it's a very great special attack. And my third pro would be that she is pretty tough to take down Somehow there is something about Sonya Blade characters that make her very resilient and she can take a lot of damage. Part of that might be due to the military west, but also her general toughness might come into play. So then let's move on to the negatives and my first negative would be that her special one attack is quite boring, it has no buffs or debuffs, it just deals damage on top, it doesn't look all that great. It is serviceable, but nothing special at all. The second one we can basically rush over because I just have listed here that her special attack can give opponents power, we had that before, so let's move on to the third one and that is that the passive only works great in a cold war team, whereas with other team members her ice shield would break after 6 seconds regardless even if they are tagged out, so that is quite useless then at least for those characters who lost the ice shield without even having a chance to make use of that, that is what we mean by that her passive is broken or that she was ruined with update 2.0. And it goes even further that characters such as Heavy Weapons Jax, Briggs or Kobujutsu Tanya on special 2 may destroy the ice shield, but since there are now only Cold War members who would really have to fear that attack and all the others basically don't have to care, those characters are kind of left hanging in the air and it really feels like upon changing her for the diamond transition they didn't put enough thought into her because all the other effects that were tied to that ice shield are now kind of useless. But to get to a final rating for Cold War Sonya Blade I am still willing to give her an 8 out of 10 and I know all that stuff with the passive and such has been quite a bummer and a very big negative for that card itself but if I just judge her by herself, which means that her ice armor is still working for her herself, she has a great special 2 attack, she has power drain, she still can give some solid protection in survivor mode in case that is needed, and on top her new brutality gear makes her a really good fighter. So despite all the criticism, she also deserves some love. And with that, my review of Cold War Sonya Blade comes to a close. As always, I thank you a lot for stopping by on the channel and I hope that you enjoyed this little character review. By now I have reviewed all Cold War characters except for Scarlet and I also might need to go back to the other ones because I did those a very long time ago and they're no longer up to date. But at the same time there are still so many other characters who don't have any review yet, so they will of course have the priority. But yeah, that's it from my side. And the only thing left for me to say is, thank you for tuning in once again. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. In case you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button twice just to make sure. And if you want to support the channel a little further, please consider joining the Patreon family of KC Mobile Gaming. You can already do that with as little as just $1 a month. 
And also follow me on social media like Twitter and Facebook. You will find all the necessary information in the description below of every video. If you want to see more content, then why don't you just click on one of those two videos here. Thank you for your support. Have a good one. Casey over and out for today.